We'll now look at different ways to represent relations, and we'll look at two in particular. We will start with a matrix. These matrices will be very sim similar to the tables we were using to represent relations before. We'll put a 1 in the ith row and jth column if a sub i is related to b sub j. If these points are not related, we give it a 0. When thinking of our table, we put in x's if two values were related. Instead of an x, we'll use a 1, and instead of a blank space, we'll actually write a 0. We'll consider this relation on 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, where the relation is defined as a greater than b. So we need a matrix. The values for a will represent our rows, and the values of b represent the columns, just like we set up for the table. 1 is not bigger than 1, or 2, or 3. 2 is bigger than 1, but not 2 or 3. 3 is bigger than 1 and 2, but not 3, and 4 is bigger than all three of these numbers. Therefore, I now have my matrix. This time, I have my matrix and I want to find the ordered pairs. Rows correspond to our first set and columns correspond to our second. So this contains the point 1, 2 from the first row. The second row gives me 2, 3. Third row gives me 3, 2 and 3, 3. And then the final row gives me 4, 1 and 4, 2. We can easily tell reflexive from a matrix because we would need all ones on the diagonal. For example, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 0, 1. We can see that this is reflexive because if I look down this main diagonal, I get all 1s. The other stuff in the matrix doesn't matter as long as the diagonal is 1. If I have something like 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, here when I look at the diagonal, I have a 0, so this one would not be reflexive. Symmetric is also easy to see in a matrix. In this case, our rows match our columns. Essentially, if I want a symmetric matrix, when I look at the first row, whatever it looks like, the first column needs to also read that way. 1, 0, 1, so my first column should be 1, 0, 1. If my second row has 0, 1, 1, my second column should be 0, 1, 1. And here, it no longer matters what I put here because my third column is 1, 1, 0, and my third row is 1, 1, 0. On the other hand, if I had a matrix that looked like this, This one would not be symmetric because if I look down my first row, I have a 1, 1, 0, but my first column has a 1, 0, 1, and those do not match. So this is not symmetric. The other way we'll look at representing these relations is called a digraph. A digraph is short for directed graph. The vertices of this graph correspond to the elements in our set. And then, for a graph, we need both vertices and edges. For our directed graph, we have directed edges. And we'll have a directed edge from A to B if the point AB is in our relation. And we'll do an example of constructing these. Here, we have a relation on the set 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the 1, 2, 3, 4 will represent our vertices and we'll have edges going between them. The fact that we have the point 1, 1 says I need an edge starting at 1 and ending at 1, so we have this little loop. We also have one from 1 to 2, one from, two, from 1 to 3, 
one from one to four. I have one between two and three, from three to one, from three to two, and then the last one from four to two. So here is the digraph. Looking at a digraph, we can determine if it's reflexive by seeing if there is a loop at every vertex. The other edges don't matter. They can look whatever, like whatever we need them to. As long as we have a loop at every vertex, these represent the points 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, etc. So this one is reflexive. However, if I have one that's missing one or more of my loops, it would not be reflexive. For symmetric in a graph, for every edge, we need one in the opposite direction. So as long as every edge has one going back the other way, we will be symmetric. So here's an example of a graph that is symmetric because for every edge, we have another edge going back in the other direction. However, if I look at the graph over here on the right, this one would not be symmetric because I have two edges, one at the top and one at the bottom, that do not go back the other direction. Transitivity is a little bit harder to tell in graphs. However, we can still do it. Essentially, in transitivity, a graph looks like a triangle. If we have a point from 1 to 2 and one from 2 to 3, I should be able to go straight from 1 to 3. And these directions are very important. If I have another one going back this way, I can go from 1 to 2. Go ahead and label these. From 1 to 2 and 2 to 1, so I should be able to go from 1 to 1. In addition, I can see that I can go from 2 to 1 and from 1 to 3, so I should be able to go from 1 to 3. So this one is actually transitive because all of my triangles flow in the correct directions. However, if I look at this graph, we'll have 1, 2, and 3. These will go in both directions and these will both go up. Rather, I want this one to go down. Here, I can go from 3 to 2 and from 2 to 1, but I cannot go from 3 to 1. So this one would not be transitive. Even though it does have the triangle, it doesn't have it moving in the correct direction.